safety car moves to the inside and ducks into the pit area. Here comes the field, 26 cars strong. And the green is out, we are racing. The Rex Mays 150 is underway. Into turn number one, Bobby Enzer has jumped out into the lead with Gordon Johncock falling into second position. Down the back stretch they go. Al Enzer is running in third. Entering turn number three, Johncock in second position closes in just a bit, but Bobby Enzer maintains the lead. Coming high off of turn number four onto the straightaway, it is Bobby Enzer leading lap number one. Johncock second, then Al Enzer, Johnny Rutherford, and Tom Steva. And to the inside, Gordon Johncock tries to get around. But he cannot do it. Hunter stretches it out a little as they go down the back stretch. The two of them were only seven hundredths of a second apart in qualifying. You can see how close they're running on the racetrack. The third position car, Al Hunter, stepped into your picture again there in that last corner. Hunter had to dart to the high side just momentarily getting out of the groove as he closed in on Gordy Johncock. I think we have a yellow. And we have a spin involving Steve Cassie in car number 64. The car out there in the fourth turn, Steve who started this race in 12th position, brings out our first yellow light of the afternoon. Larry, we've got to mention right now, Mike Mosley has passed at least 10 cars in these first two laps. Well, we anticipated Mosley moving to the front as we look at Steve Chassis. Chassis, by the way, was probably one of the more interesting rookie stories here, and I think uh, with the consideration that 10 other drivers had their rookie debut at Indianapolis, he was probably the most interesting rookie story of this race. There's Mike Mosley. We commented that he's passed at least 10 cars already, super fast in practice. They had problems with this car all day yesterday on the qualifying day, and well, can Mosley move to the front and win? It happened once in the history of this racetrack. Art Pollard once was involved in a crash early in the race, had to start in last position in a backup car. He moved all the way to the front and won. Can Mosley do it today? Okay, that's the way it stands. We're roughly one-third of the way through the Gould Rex Maze 150. We'll see how Mike Mosley and the rest of this field can do. But first, these messages as we continue with our CART 1981 IndyCar Highlight Special. Is out and Bobby Enter leads them down the back stretch with Gordon Johncock still running second. Here is Mike Mosley still trying to move up. He's now in 11th position, trying to get around Bob Lazier in 10th position. Mike Mosley to the inside, cannot get around, and Mosley drops back into 11th. He's battling with Bob Lazier. Now he gets around in turn number three. Mike Mosley to the inside, and he's now running in 10th position. He has moved up 16 spots in the first seven laps. Mike Mosley from Fallbrook, California, and that beautiful number 48 Eagle prepared by Dan Gurney, sponsored by Pepsi. Here's Mike Mosley down the back stretch. The leader continues to be Bobby Enter in number three. Here he is coming into the third turn. And Mike Mosley now running in 10th position. The rest of the field passes by from our third turn camera. Meanwhile, the leader is in turn number one now, Bobby Enter, with about a 12 to 15 car length advantage on Gordon Johncock. Running in third still is Al Unser. Fourth is Johnny Rutherford. And fifth, Tom Stevens. Sixth is Mario Andretti. Now, let's remember that Bobby Hunter dominated the Indianapolis 500-mile race from a speed standpoint. And over the past two seasons, Hunter, I paused because I saw Tom Steva way up high coming out of the fourth turn. He gathered him back in, though, and touched nothing. Commenting about Bobby Unser, there's a third place car, Al Unser, and a fourth place car, Johnny Rutherford. Bobby Unser and Johnny Rutherford over the past season and a half have dominated Indy type car racing. And one thing this field from man to man definitely fears is Bobby Unser getting that perfect setup and running away from the field. Let's go to Gary Lee in the pit area. And Cliff Usual is not a happy man. The first departure from the race. What happened, Cliff? All right, and uh, our leader, Bobby Unser, is passing some slower cars on the racetrack, getting around Jim Dewey. Bobby Unser coming out of turn number two onto the back stretch. Gordon Johncock running in second position also gets around Jim Dewey to the inside. And Bobby Unser now stretches out the advantage a little bit on Gordon Johncock. Unser in turn number four. He has completed 11 laps. This will complete lap number 12. And Bob Fry is the car to the inside that Bobby is going around on the straightaway. Oh, Fry's paint probably isn't even dry. We commented he picked up the sponsor overnight, and we understand they repainted 
painted that car to get the Jolly Rancher candy name on it. And they weren't even sure the car was going to be dry or not for this race, Bob. The interval between Unser and second place Gordon Johncock is about a quarter of a second. Bobby Unser off of turn number four onto the straightaway. Again, going around a slower car. That is Steve Chassis in the 64. Steve brought out our first yellow light of the afternoon as he spun in the early stages of the race. Now Bobby Unser goes to the high side on the racetrack and gets around Steve Chassis. Second place, Gordon Johncock. Third is Johnny Rutherford. Fourth is Tom Sneva. And fifth is Mario Andretti. Running in the sixth position right now, Behind Andretti is the number 32 car of Kevin Colgan, who qualified in the first four rows. One of the surprises in the early season of the IndyCar circuit. And right behind Colgan is Mike Mosley, who continues that relentless drive to the top. Right behind Mosley is Scott Brayton. Now, Brayton and Colgan have been running with each other on the racetrack since the green flag drop. They started side by side. Mosley temporarily is sandwiched between them. Here we see Rutherford chassis. So Tom Sneva out there on the racetrack moving around the traffic. Here is Bobby Unser, our leader. Unser has led all the way to this point. We've completed 15 laps. He jumped into the lead at the drop of the green flag from outside number one starting position and still has the lead. Gordon Johncock and Al Unser are in somewhat of a battle for a second. Al Unser moves right up on the tail of Gordon Johncock, but Johncock able to get into turn number three with a little bit more power. John Cock and Al Unser running second and third here at Milwaukee with 16 laps completed. Well, John Cock has won three races. There you see a crewman from Gordy John Cock telling him the lap time, 28.3 seconds for Gordy John Cock. That's about 127 miles an hour or about seven miles an hour slower than he qualified, but that's expected under race conditions with race setup and traffic. John Cock working really hard, going around the high side of Herb Johnson. He has a rear view mirror full of Al Unser, and Al Unser is jumping at the pit, hoping that Gordy would make some kind of mistake to allow him to move into the runner-up position. All right, this is the battle for a second position again involving Gordon John Cock and Al Unser. Unser now moves high on the racetrack, coming out of two, tries to get around that way and cannot. Now he moves to the inside in turn three. Al Unser can't do it. Gordon John Cock slams the door, going into three. Your leader continues to be Bobby Unser. He has opened up quite an advantage now in the second place car of Gordon Johncock. The battle is for second. Look at Gordon Johncock moving way down low on the racetrack, and Al Unser gets around. Unser takes over second as Johncock had to go clear to the inside of the racetrack here on the straightaway to avoid a slower car. And Al Unser moves into second. Johncock is running in third. Well, something happened with the slower car. I don't know if it was John Mailer or not. It was definitely a white car that slowed in front of Gordy. Perhaps it was Mailer. I saw Mailer's hand go up, so he had a mechanical problem. Unfortunately, it happened at just the wrong time at the wrong place for Gordy Johncock, and Gordy had to get way out of the racing groove he had selected initially to come down the front stretch to avoid running into the tail end of John Mailer. And now Allenzer sets his sights on his brother Bobby, who is leading this race. Al Unser started in third position, has moved up to second here in the Rex Phase 150. Here is brother Bobby continuing to lead the activity down the straightaway, going around Larry Dixon. Bobby Unser into turn number one, and you can see that Al Unser is right behind him. Al Unser has been a, somewhat of a sleeper here this weekend, had mechanical problems, was finally able to qualify late yesterday afternoon in third starting position, and now he runs second in the Rex Mays 150. Here Meanwhile, is Mike Mosley going around Mario Andretti or trying to at least in turn number three? As now Mike Mosley is running in seventh position, trying to go around Mario Andretti for sixth. As we watch Mosley in the yellow car on the right hand side of the screen and Andretti the STP orange and blue car on the left hand side of the screen, there you see them badly going to turn number one and number two. We are perhaps laps away from a very classic duel between the Unser brothers. Remember, these are the cars battling for a sixth and seventh position in the race right now. Up front, Bobby Unser leads, Al Unser is second. They are about as far apart as Andretti and the number 48 car of Mosley are. And here they are, battling side by side down the straightaway.
away. Good racing for sixth position here. Mike Mosley to the inside of Mario Andretti, and Mike Mosley gets around. A neat move on the inside in turns one and two, and Mike Mosley has moved up to sixth position. Don't forget, he started 25th this afternoon after having suffered a problem during the qualifying yesterday. I'll tell you, Mosley was like chipping out of the sand trap and putting it in the cup. He was right down in the grass, and there's just no way you should be able to do that and get away with it. Bobby Unser sets the pace here and down the backstretch. We have completed 23 laps of this 150 mile, 150 lap race. I think one of the questions that a lot of race fans have is, will the stock blocks go the distance? There was quite a discussion about that for a 500 mile race. I think the general feeling is that a 150 mile, mile race is uh, much better for the stock block engine. Well, no question about that. Remember that the Gurney crew, as we watch the leader, Bobby Unser, who right now has a lead and is certainly not commanding, I wouldn't even classify it as comfortable. The Gurney crew, we were talking about Mike Mosley's ride, they were all day yesterday reconstructing the engine on the number 48 race car. So to a degree, they're working with an unknown commodity today. And Mosley, I'm sure, has a lot on his mind right now as he tries to work his way toward the front. All right, with 25 laps completed, here are the standings. In the lead, Bobby Unser, second, Allen. Third is Gordon Johncock. Fourth is Johnny Rutherford. Fifth is Tom Sneva. Sixth is Mike Mosley. Seventh is Mario Andretti. Eighth is car number 32, Kevin Kogan. Ninth is Scott Brayton. And tenth is Tom Bigelow. And Mosley continues to run well out of the racetrack. Remember, this is a one-mile racetrack, which is basically a short track for Indianapolis-type cars. The track is also flat, which adds another dimension to the task of trying to pass another competitor on this racetrack. You'll notice a lot of drivers try to sneak below the competitor that they are approaching. That seems to be really the best and most safe way to pass on a flat racetrack. But of course, the guy in front of you knows exactly that, too. And if he's running slower than you are, he's going to be pinching down in the corners. The car that can run the best is down at the bottom of the racetrack, where it is almost absolutely, positively flat, is going to do well here today. And that's where Mosley has been trying to gain the advantage. And this stop block is operating real well. It's really pulling him out of the hole, exiting turns two and turns four. Well, Mike Mosley has won here at Milwaukee. He likes this racetrack and was running among the fastest on the track yesterday when he experienced the mechanical problem. Meanwhile, we go back and check on the leader, Bobby Unser. A .37 interval, 37 hundredths of a second advantage for Bobby Unser over Al Unser. Down the backstretch here at Milwaukee with 28 laps completed. Bobby Unser has led all the way to this point. Running in third, still Gordon Johncock. Fourth is Johnny Rutherford. Fifth is Tom Steva. And those cars are about a half a lap apart. The first five cars, about a half a lap interval. You know, Bob, back in 1978, when Al Unser, the second place car on your screen, won the Indianapolis 500, he and his team, the Jim Hall team at that time, they were the hot setup in automobile racing. But Al really hasn't had the success that he enjoyed in 1978 since then. And Al is now right on the outside of Bobby. And Al Unser trying to go around on the outside off of turn number four down the straightaway. The brothers Unser battling for the lead with Bobby maintaining the position into turn number one. Al is not... ...completed 69 laps. Gordon Johncock is the leader. We have been yellow on two occasions. One was for a spin by Steve Chassis, the other for a spin by Jim Buick. And now Gordon Johncock is able to get around a slower car out there in turn number three. Also, Bobby Unser able to get around. The first three cars are on the main straightaway and separated by probably about one and a half seconds. Into the pit area, meanwhile, comes Bob Fry in car number 71. That is one of the cars that started uh, toward the rear of the field in 23rd position. Bob qualified yesterday at 119.067, and he appears to have some kind of a problem with that car. The crew moving out and taking its time to find out what the problem is. Fry is one of the three Offenhauser powered cars in this race, and he's also one of the top stars in the sprint car circuit. Gordon Johncock and Bobby Enzer continue to battle for position on the racetrack. Once again, down that back stretch, we pick him up from our third turn camera, which is high over the third turn. And we 
see them dive down low into turn number three and four. Then come high off of the fourth turn as they come onto the straightaway. John Cox and Bobby Esser running one-two with Mike Mosley not too far behind. You know, Bob, there was a time in big-time automobile racing where there was a lot of strategy going on among these drivers during a race. Back in the 50s, you heard the comment a lot, well, I spent 20 laps just testing them. But that really doesn't happen that often in Major League Automobile Racing now, and it sure looks like these two cars are very evenly matched. This is the Gould Rex Mays 150 from State Fair Park in Milwaukee. We'll be back with more racing activity after this. During our... We are back live at Milwaukee, and we have a fire in the pit area of Herman Johnson. Herm, call out of that car, is now being assisted by the safety people. And we also have a car in the wall. It's Bobby Unser. Bobby Unser is in the wall in turn number four. So activity here at Milwaukee, hot and heavy. First, the fire in the pit area of Herman Johnson. We will continue to watch that situation to see if Johnson suffered any injuries. It appears that Bobby Unser, who is up against the wall in turn number three, is not injured. We see movement from the cockpit, and we see that the car is not damaged all that badly. But Herm Johnson may have suffered some burns in this fire in his pit. Well, Bob, one of the things that surprised me, there's Bobby Unser standing up in the cockpit of his race car. Again, that car has hit the wall. There's the leader, Gordon Johncock, coming in the pit. The car goes up on jacks, right side rubber being changed. Not usually necessary, but fresh rubber has a tendency to go faster than used rubber. The fuel going in, it's a reasonably leisure pit stop because we are under yellow. The car is backed down on the racetrack. The crew members say go, and the leader, Gordy Johncock, has an uneventful pit stop here under caution. Well, all the leaders are going in. Let's go to Gary for more details on that fire. Right now, CART Safety Director Steve Edwards is walking with Herm Johnson to the ambulance. He was in the car for a mandatory, the uh, customary pit stop. Apparently, there was some leakage of the alcohol. There was a fire in the cockpit. He pulled some 10 to 15 feet away from the pit area, stopped, signaled to the crew that he was on fire. There was a momentary lap there where no one knew exactly what was happening. So the crew was ran to him. One crew member took a bucket of water and threw into the cockpit. Another crew member grabbed the fire extinguisher. The entire car was doused with the powder. The fire was quickly extinguished. Herm getting out with the help of the crew members. And right now, again, he has walked over to the ambulance to talk with uh, medical personnel and safety director Steve Edwards. That is the situation right now in the pit area with Herm Johnson. So there you see, as you can see. Steve has taken over the lead, and here he is on the straightaway. And more importantly for Russell Bird on the pit stop is the fact that he stayed on the same lap with the leaders. Johnny Rutherford right now is out of sync with the rest of the cars on the racetrack as far as pit stops go. And whether or not he'll have an opportunity to win this race, assuming it goes green the rest of the way, will be determined by his fuel mileage and the ability of his crew to predict precisely what kind of mileage they're getting. He stayed on the same lap. There's Rutherford. He's not leading right now. He's on the same lap with the leaders, running in eighth position on the track, but out of synchronization with the others on the same lap who are leading the race. All right, and we have been noticing that the uh, lead situation is a pretty good one, too, with Tom Steva and Mike Mosley kind of dicing out there for a position for the lead. Meanwhile, is Johnny Rutherford, who continues to run in eighth position. Right ahead of him is Mario Andretti in seventh, and Rutherford to the outside gets around Mario Andretti. So now Rutherford moves into second, seventh position down the back stretch. Bob, another problem that Rutherford has right now, being about a half a lap behind the leaders, is the fact that he has a full load of fuel, and there's the battle for first position, and Mosley has moved in. Mike Mosley, the fastest stock block in America, has moved to the lead here at the Milwaukee uh, race for the Rex Mays Gold 150. Mike Mosley, the new leader, getting around Steve. -up. We were commenting that Rutherford's at a disadvantage with a full load of fuel. His car is heavier, and therefore more slow right now than the other competitors who have run 20 or 30 laps. Well, it's been said many times, but it certainly is true that a race can be won and lost in the pit area. Now, should we have another yellow, and we certainly hope we don't have one for an accident, but should there be the piece of debris on the track or something, these other cars are going to be able to come in under yellow, unlike Rutherford, who had to come in under green. Mike Mosley leads the Rex Mays 150 after having started in 25th position. 
We'll be back. There is no person that works harder or has worked harder the past few years to develop the stock lock engine than that man. And apparently it is going to pay off here this afternoon. We are still under yellow. This will complete lap 145. Only five more laps to go for Mike Mosley in car 48, the Pepsi Challenger. At least we forget that Dan Gurney had a pretty illustrious driving career himself. The first American to win a Formula One race in a car of his own design, and a man who once finished second at the Indianapolis 500 mile race on two occasions. Championship Auto Racing teams has sanctioned this race here this afternoon, and it's been an exciting one. And again, a reminder, we will have more of these kart IndyCar races live for you on ESPN. Our next one will be at Atlanta, Georgia. Running on the racetrack directly in front of the leader right now, Mike Mosley, uh, was Tom Bigelow, although Mosley now seems to have moved around Bigelow. Bigelow is several laps down from the leader. Another one of the stock blocks out on the racetrack, and uh, the cars that run behind the lead cars, they do have the option to wave one of the faster cars, one of the leaders by. We are going green with four more laps to go. This completes lap number 146. Mike Mosley is your leader. We have just a short distance now before the end of this race, and Mike Mosley is in a very good position here, and I'm sure his object now is just to keep the car between the retaining walls and to make sure they're at least to hope that nothing goes wrong with the engine of the car. Well, Mosley was very conservative on the start, as you saw. Sometimes there is confusion at the restart of a race, and Mike really took his time and was cautious going to the first couple of corners. And he's definitely not at the top speed that we've seen him in running most of the day. You saw him, however, dispose of Kevin Cogan, which surprised me a little bit because Cogan is running competitive. Kevin in third position. But Mosley just trying to ride this one out now. He's checking all the gauges he possibly can as he goes around the racetrack, trying to keep his eye, of course, on traffic in front of him. We don't expect to see him making very many uh, mistakes and certainly taking no chances in the next couple of laps. And timing and scoring now in four Tom Steva is running in second position with Kevin Cogan in third, Mario Andretti fourth, and Johnny Rutherford in fifth position. Here is Mike Mosley again putting a lap on Dick Simon on the backstretch, and the white flag is in the hands of our official starter, Nick Bonoro. And as Mosley comes down the straightaway, he will be shown that white flag indicating one more circuit to go. There it is, the white flag for Mike Mosley. One more circuit on this one-mile track in Milwaukee, and the Rex Mays 150 belongs to Mosley. You know, it takes about 28 seconds to get around, and I can hear Gurney right now. 14, 15, 16. He's just holding his breath and counting them down. And I'm sure that's what Mike Mosley is doing, too. He's in turn three for the final time. Now in four. Off of it, onto the straightaway. Mike Mosley wins the Gould Rex Mays 150 at Milwaukee in dramatic style. Started 25th, finishes first. The hand goes up, the salute to the crowd. Gathered here at Milwaukee, both in the stands and in the infield, Mike Mosley and Dan Gurney, a very happy combination. Bob, if memory serves me correctly, I believe that the last time a stock block engine won one of these IndyCar races might have been George Former more than 10 years ago. Gary Lee has Dan Gurney. There are handshakes all around, thumbs up. Here he is, Dan. It has been a rags to riches weekend for this Eagle. Oh, we sure have our ups and downs, and this is terrific, Gary. And it's great for the stock block fans. Well, I must say, Mike couldn't have done a better job. He's just terrific. Let's go down to Victory Circle. Good idea. Thank you, Dan Gurney. Bob? All right, Gary. Mike Mosley still is out on the racetrack. He wants to celebrate as much as he can. Still has that right hand in the air saluting the fans. I'll tell you, he did have it up a long time. You can get an idea of how important this victory was. Now, there it goes back up again. <laughs> Mosley mighty proud of the performance of his machine, his crew, and of course himself today. An important victory for this racing team and maybe a reasonably important victory for automobile racing, Bob. So there you have it, a very happy Dan Gurney. The final standings, Mike Mosley finishes number one, Kevin Kogan number two, and Mario Andretti finished third. Uh